gives us the idea of fruits. Mm -hmm. So that is why this chapter is very important. Right. Okay, so what are, uh, before we talk about laws of motion, right, let us talk about uh, the idea that Galileo gave, right, so, and that is inertia. Right, what is inertia? So inertia is the ability of uh, the object to remain in its uh, original state. So let's say that if if uh, I am uh, if I am moving, right, then I will uh, be I will continue to move, right. Similarly, if I am at rest, so then I will uh, be at rest uh, indefinitely. So whatever the state is, the object try to remain at, at the same state. And that ability of that object is what we call energy, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say, let's say that uh, I will give you an example. Let's say that uh, the car is traveling, right? Yeah. The car is traveling on the road. Now suddenly what happens is that uh, the engine fails. So this is moving let's say with 30 meter per second, right? And uh, now at some point, let's say engine fails. So will it move uh, all the way and will it move with 30 meter per second, always? Yes. Let's say the engine fails, right? Why it will stop? What is the reason? Because the engine failed. Yeah, but the car was traveling so it will try it will try to remain in, in its uh, original uh, state right why it is stopped it should not because the law of energy the inertia states that it will be continuously moving if it was moved right be continuous yes sorry can you repeat the last word it will be <laughs> It will be continuously uh, moving, right? Yeah. If it was moving, then it will continue to move. That is the inertial mm -hmm. states, right? Mm -hmm. So why it is stopping? Because the engine failed. <laughs> so I'm saying that, let's say engine, uh, you are driving some uh, bicycle or let's say some car, right? And it was moving with personal speed, that's why. Mm. Like and uh, can you identify? Yeah, so now you are coming to the right answer. So external force is applied, right? Yeah. What could be that external force? Can you identify? Let me give you the same scenario. Right. Yeah. Let me give you the same scenario that uh, you are. So this is our earth. Right. And let's say if somebody is, uh, let's say this is uh, some satellite, right? And this satellite is uh, out of bounds of this earth, right? This is not bounded by this earth. And this is uh, moving with uh, 20 meter per second, right? So uh, there, uh, will there be any time when it will stop to move? No. So it will be continuously moving. Yeah. Right. And if it was at some uh, place, right, and that is uh, stationary, so it will remain in its position. Right. Yes. This is uh, the space. So this is space. Right. So now can you tell me that why this is not stopping here? why the law of inertia is applicable, why inertia is applied here, why inertia fails in here, on the road. Why in the satellite situation, there is, no for, there is no other force which is being applied for it to stop. Good. In and what the, about this? Uh, there is another force which is being there applied. Is another. Good, good. So that gives you inertia gives you the idea of force which is applied on the object, right? So can you identify what is the force that is stopping this car to move? Pseudo force? Why you are fixated with pseudo force? I don't know. So uh, whenever, whenever this idea of pseudo force you want to apply, you think about the acceleration. 
whenever we talk about acceleration, then the idea of this uh, pseudo force uh, should come, right? There is no acceleration in here. 30 meter per second, continuous, so no acceleration, right? Hmm. So why it is stopping? What what is stopping this? Let me give you one hint. So where is tire? Where are the tires for this car? Under the car. Under the car, but yeah. Where are they? Let me just... On the road? On the road, yeah. So Which they are... Is... Now you identify. It's right. Good. So these tires and these roads... Oh, I... okay. So that is what is stopping this car to move from. Right. So okay. due to frictional force, this car will stop. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would have, uh, we would not need any fuel to refuel this car or uh, we not need any fuel to cover larger distances, right? If this road is uh, so smooth, right? If this road is more so smooth or let's say you are uh, on some ice, right? If this road is made up of some ice and which is uh, very smooth. So then we don't, uh, will not require engine, will not require fuel. This will automatically, if you push this car, then it will automatically reach uh, larger distances, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is what we call inertia, right? Whenever the object is whatever uh, at uh, whatever state, it will continue to remain at that state forever, right? Until and unless that part comes later. Right, that part is the first law of uh, motion. Right. So whenever you say that uh, the object will want to remain at its uh, initial state, up to that point, that is Galilean's law. Right. You are not when talking about the object. Goes? Yeah. So whenever uh, the object, uh, the ability of an object to remain in in its current state, that is what we call inertia. Right. Okay. Yes. Sir. So if the object is moving, it will continue to move. If the object is at rest, it will continue to be at rest. Thank that you. is what we call inertia. And that is what we call Galilean law. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And this inertia gives the idea. So this is the reason that uh, if the brake is applied on the car or if the brake is applied on the, let's say, bus, then the person will move forward because of the inertia of uh, rest, right? Because the object was at rest, right? And then, uh, yeah, the object, uh, so if the car is uh, stopped, then it will uh, continue to remain at rest, right? So then it uh, moves uh, forward. So that is uh, the idea of uh, this inertia. What did I say wrong? Okay, so the person was moving, right? Not uh, stationary. In the car, the person was also moving. Although he is uh, stationary, but uh, altogether he was moving. So it will uh, want to move continuously. But if the brake is applied, then if it will, uh, because he wants to move uh, further, so it will move forward. Right? That is uh, the law of inertia. Okay, so yeah, let us write uh, the definition of energy. The ability of the object to remain in its current uh, state. Right. So if the object is uh, at rest, it will continue to be at rest. If the object is still moving, it will continue to be uh, moving. Right. So that is what we call uh, inertia. And uh, it is dependent on months. 
right? So if you have uh, a larger mass, energy inertia will be larger or small? If you have a larger mass. Yeah, so inertia will be larger or small. What do you think? So can you give an example? So let's say that uh, you have, uh, let's say that you have a hundred kg of, let's say thousand kg of car travel. Okay. Right. And let's say you have a uh, 10 kg of car travel. So let's say the engine fails for both the cases, which will remain in its uh, original, uh, which will uh, move uh, fast. That is. Which will move faster? Farthest, farthest. Which will farthest. move? 10 kg. The one, with the, less, the one with the less weight will like stop for first. So uh, it will stop first since inertia. Oh, inertia is more in the first one because they will stop first. And then mm. uh, the 100 kg one, like mm. it will move a little bit because of the weight it has. Yeah. So... To, uh, if you want to stop the uh, uh, heavier one, it will take uh, more time, right? Yeah. So, inertia is dependent upon mass. And, uh, yeah, so the larger... The mass... Or uh, what should be yeah. more the mass, larger the image. Right. Okay, so then what are kinds of uh, inertia? Here are three kinds, right? One is uh, inertia of rest, right? So that you understand uh, here, right? Yes. And then what would be the other kind? Yeah, what would be the other kind? Inertia of motion, right? Yeah. And then the third kind is inertia of direction. Right. So uh, inertia of uh, rest, you know that if the object is at rest, it will continue to be at rest. Inertia of motion is that if the object is uh, in motion, it will continue to be in motion. What is inertia of direction? So let's say that object is uh, moving. Right. The object is moving in this uh, direction. Now, uh, if there is no centripetal force, right, suddenly this uh, force uh, vanishes, then it will move in this direction, right? Whatever direction it was going, it will uh, want to remain in that direction, right? Let's say the object is at this point. So let's say that centripetal force goes away somehow this force goes away, then it will move in this direction, right? So could you explain that part to me? Yeah, so let's say that uh, this is moving in cycle because of the centripetal force. Okay. Towards right. the center and because towards of the center. The, yeah, towards the center, that is why this is moving in a cycle. But let's say that suddenly this force goes away. So what was the direction at this point? The direction of this object was this this direction. Yeah. So if this uh, force goes away, then it will move in this direction, right? Yeah. So that is how the if the uh, object goes out of the orbit, so it goes tangent, right? Okay. Yeah. So that is uh, because of the inertia of direction. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so can you give an example for it? So the example was that let's say this is Earth, right? And let's say that uh, suddenly this uh, object, right? So this uh, object was uh, moving, right? 
and let's say that uh, suddenly the velocity with which it was moving, so that velocity goes up, right? Then it will move in this direction. Okay. Right. So because it can no longer maintain its uh, centripetal axis, right? Yeah. So then it will move uh, in this direction. Okay, one moment. Let's give Okay, sorry, sorry, there was a call. So, yeah, these are uh, the different kinds of energy. Now, we have understood about what is energy. So, then we can talk about the first law of motion, right? So. So, what uh, does this first law of uh, motion state? that uh, the object at rest will uh, remain at uh, rest or the object at uh, motion will uh, remain in motion and this is the part of which newton had right will remain in motion until and unless external force so the first law of motion gives you the idea of force that if the object suddenly stops or if the object suddenly moves then we can imagine that some force is applied on that, right? Yes, sir. So that way we can identify that some force is applied, right? So no. until an analysis, external force is applied on the object. Right, so this is for... So yeah, please note down up to this point, right? Oh, so we have not written. Sir, when you have taken the call and noted it down. Yes, you have already. Oh, you yeah, have already noted it down. No, mm -hmm. no, yeah. I just have to take the down the line. For this one. Yeah. Okay, please note it down and read one. So yeah, please. Uh, Write it down and then we'll talk about the other.
Yes, sir. Done. Okay, so then, yeah, before we talk about second law of motion, so we have to talk about a, a very important uh, physical quantity, which is needed to explain the second law of motion, right? And that is uh, what we call moment. Right? So, is not a scalar quantity, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Because it is associated with velocity, so it yes. is not a... Yeah. So what is a product? Uh, what is a momentum? So it is uh, the product of... It is the product of uh, mass and uh, velocity. Oh, I guess we have to join something, right? Which room we have to join? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw some pop up that we have to join some. What is the room that we have to join? Mm -hmm. Let me ask. Did you see some uh, pop ups? No, sir. Okay, because I saw it. Let me ask the law review to. Do yeah, we don't have to join anyone. Oh. Okay. So then they just want to move in. Yeah, so it is the product of mass and uh, velocity, right? And uh, it is a vector quantity, as we were saying. It is a vector quantity. It is denoted by conventionally, right? Because it is uh, starting with M, but we usually denote it, so it is denoted by P. P. Right. And P. somewhere it is written capital P, somewhere it is small P, so whatever. Right. P vector. Right. And uh, what would be its uh, SI unit? So its SI unit is uh, mass into velocity. So kg meter per cell, right? Yes, sir. And uh, what is uh, the formula? So the formula for this thing is P M into E, right? Mass is a scalar quantity and uh, V is a vector quantity. So if you multiply, let's say if you multiply some scalar with some vector, then the product would be a vector, right? Yes, sir. So that is why it is a vector point. Okay, so yeah, and the magnitudes uh, would uh, simply be mv. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is uh, the momentum, right? Now, with the idea of momentum, we can uh, define. So let's say that, uh, let me give you a very simple question. The object of mass 2 kg is uh, moving with, let's say, uh, 20 meter per second velocity. Find the momentum of the object. Right, so what would be the momentum? 40. Yes. Meter per second. 40 This is very simple, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, with the idea of with the idea of this momentum, we can define 
we can define uh, the uh, second law of motion. Right? So let's say that uh, the object, right? Let's say that the object of mass 2 kg, this is uh, moving with, uh, let's say, 30 meter per second, right? And now something happens with this uh, thing, right? And then it uh, now moves with, let's say, 40 meter per second, right? So this is uh, 2 kg and uh, the mass remains constant, right? So now what is uh, happening? Velocity is changing. Mass is fixed, right? So if the car, let's say if the car is traveling or if uh, you are traveling, right? Yeah. In the car with uh, 30 meter per second and let's say the car speeds up and the speed becomes 40 meter per second. So your mass your mass will remain fixed, right? Yeah. It will not change. So mass, mass is uh, a constant quantity as of now, right? Yeah. This will not uh, happen for the case of uh, what? Can you give an example in which, in which uh, the velocity will change, but the mass uh, will also change? Mass will also change. Yeah, mass will also change. So this happens in uh, case of rocket uh, propulsion, right? Rocket? So, yeah, so if you propel a uh, rocket uh, upwards, right? Yeah. So rocket okay. has uh, different chambers. In the lower chamber, lowest chamber, there is a fuel and that is burning. So due to the burning of uh, the fuel, you are providing some kinetic energy and then the rocket is moving upwards. So due right. to the burning of fuel, the mass is decaying, right? Or mass is uh, getting lesser and lesser. So mass is changing for rocket system, rocket propulsion, right? Okay. So in that case, the mass will also change. But for the most of the cases, right? For most of the cases, the mass will remain constant. Right. Most of the case. Generally, mass is a constant point. Right. So, only velocity is changing. Now, if the velocity is changing, what will happen to momentum? Let's say, in here, momentum is uh, how much? What is the momentum in here? In which one? In the third, in the... In this one, in this one, right? Oh, okay, uh, 60. 60, right? And uh, what is the momentum at this state? 80 kg. 80, right. So, and there would also be some time to get to this uh, state, right? There's, there would be some time change, right? Yeah. So, with the idea of change in momentum, we can define the second law of motion, right? So we can define that uh, the force applied on an object is directly proportional to the change in momentum right and force is what kind of quantity what is what kind of quantity is uh, force mm -hmm. this This is what kind of quantity? Scalar or vector? Oh, uh, is it? So it, it is related with the moment, right? With, yeah, so it's going to be uh, vector only. Vector quantity, right? So it is, it is a vector quantity, so it should have some direction, right? So the force applied on object is uh, proportional to the change in momentum. 
and is in the direction of motion of the object, right? So whatever direction the object was moving, so the force would be in that way, right? So let's say that uh, this is uh, some object. I push this object with some force and it moves in this direction, right? Yeah. So if it is moving in this direction, which means that the force is in this touch, right? Yeah. So that is the direction of uh, the force. Now, how can we write this numeric, right? The force is uh, directly proportional to change in uh, momentum, and I should write uh, proportional to the rate of the rate of change, right? So whenever I talk about rate, then there is an inherent quantity which would be there. What would be that? Yes. Well, could you ask again? So whenever I talk about rate of something, so that will uh, give us the idea of time, right? It is related with time, right? The rate of change of velocity, so that is dv by d. Rate of change of uh, distance, so that is dx by dt. So whenever I talk about rate, so which means that in the denominator I have time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So similarly, we'll have uh, this thing, and if we remove this proportionality, so this will be delta p by delta t, right? In here, this f is f average. Right. So what would be this F average? This would be P final minus P initial, simply. Right. And if I talk about instantaneous force, so that would be simply dt by dt. Clear up to this point? Yes, sir. Now, uh, what was this? Uh, what was this? Momentum. What was this momentum? Yeah, what was this momentum? Oh, uh, mass into velocity. Mass into velocity. Right. So now you have to differentiate this. Thing. Right. So we have to apply the product rule in here. Right. Yeah. So what would be the product rule? Can you tell me? What is the product rule of different solution? If you have V into V and you want to differentiate it, so what do you do? Hmm. I have the thing separate it out. Separate it out, then separate is this one, right? V plus V. Oh. What is Product the product rule was that first you take out this term, differentiate the other, then you take out the other term, differentiate the first term. That was the term, right? Similarly, what would be there in this case? Would be there in this case. So um, you do the same. Thing. Yeah. So. So, so what would be in, into d v divided by dx. T t and, the, I, the and divided by d t. Yeah, and then plus. So why? You are confused. You are absolutely correct. So don't hesitate. Right. Yes, now you have to identify. I will ask you two questions. What is dv by dt? dv by dt is acceleration. So this becomes in. Right. Yep. And what is uh, this thing? 
dx by dt or dm by dt is velocity. No, so you don't have dx by dt. dm by dt. dt m is a constant or variable. Okay, so you have still velocity. No, so this is mass, not distance, right? Um, okay, mass, mass, okay. dx by dt is v. m is a constant. If you differentiate a constant, uh, what do you get? Zero. So this is zero, right? So for a constant mass, you get f equals to m. So that is the second law of another way of writing second law of m. Right. And uh, generally you write that f net on an object. So whatever force is acting on that object, that is equal to m. Right. So that is if there are several forces acting on that object, then this is f net equals to all m for multiple forces. Right. Is it uh, clear to you? So can you explain the last part? Yeah. So let's say that uh, you have this object. F net. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you have this object and let's say that some uh, F1 is acting, okay. some uh, F2 is acting, some F3 is acting, right? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it is moving in this stance. Sir, F2 is going the opposite direction. Yeah. So let's say the other kinds of forces are acting, right? For example, let's say friction is acting, right? So friction would be in the opposite direction, right? Yeah. So several forces are acting and it is moving with acceleration A in this stance. It has mass. Now, what would be the second law? So second law would be F1 plus F2 plus F3. That would be M into M. Right. So that is why I call it F net equals to M. Is so it uh, clear? I am in the that is the uh, second law of right? Total, total forces, whatever forces are acting on that thing, and it, if, if it is moving with acceleration, so now this is moving with acceleration in this direction. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say that if it was moving with acceleration in this direction, then we would take this axis. But yeah. let's say ultimately, whatever acceleration it has, let's say that uh, you have a car, right? You have, you have a car and somebody is, uh, let's say, applying force from behind the car, right? Yeah. Somebody is pushing the car from right-hand side. Somebody is pushing the car from left-hand side. And ultimately, the car is moving with some acceleration, right? Let's say that if the person which is applying the force in the right-hand side, that force is larger than the other forces, then it will move in the left direction, right? Clear? Yes, sir. And let's say that uh, if the object, uh, the most amount of force that is there, that is from behind, then the car will move forward, right? Okay. So that is why we count total forces. If you have so many forces acting on that object, if you have only, so if let's say that this is the car, right? And let's say that, uh, let's say that one person is moving this car from this side. And let's say that another uh, person is moving this car from this side. Another person is moving this car from this side. So three people are applying the forces. In that case also, it will move in this direction. So in this case, F1 plus F2 plus F3, that would be M. Yes, M is mass of this, right? Clear? Yes, sir. And let's say if only one person is uh, applying uh, the force, then you have simply F equals to M. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. 
So yeah, it depends on how many forces you are applying. But Newton's law states that you count all the forces on that object. Ultimately, it will produce some acceleration and uh, the object which has some mass, it will move with this axis. So that is the second law. Is it uh, clear? Yes. This is the most important. I can put several stars. Okay, so yeah, if this becomes clear, then uh, all the other chapters will become easier, right? So we'll understand the free body diagram and we'll do the similar thing, right? So we were talking about energy, right? We were talking about inertia and in inertia, the object wanted to remain in its original state, current state. So let's say that all the forces you are applying Right, it accumulate to zero. F net becomes zero. Then what so, will happen? I didn't get it. Okay, so I will talk about that later. Uh, right. No, can you just tell one second? I didn't understand the question. Okay, so let's say that uh, let us understand inertia from this definition. Right. So okay. let's say that uh, what you are doing. Let's say that car was uh, traveling okay. car was traveling yeah. now now let's say that somebody is uh, four four or five people they are chasing the car right so let's say that uh, the car is uh, traveling right and uh, there are four cars which are chasing this car so let's say one car is behind it is pushing in this direction this car is in the front, it is pushing in this direction with same force. Another car is in the left hand side and it is pushing in this direction. And another car is uh, in this uh, right hand side and it is pushing in this direction. Mm -hmm. Now, this car was traveling. So, it will continue to travel, right? Which car was traveling? The big one? This this one, this one. No. Yeah, yeah. This okay. one. So it will continue to travel because all the forces are canceling each other out. Yeah. And similarly, let's say that if this car was stationary, right? Zero. So it will remain at its initial state. Yeah. It will be remain zero. So that is how if this F net becomes zero, right? Mm -hmm. So then this acceleration becomes zero. If F net becomes zero, the acceleration becomes zero. Okay. Because mass can never be zero, right? Yeah. So acceleration has to be zero. And there are two scenarios. There are two scenarios in which acceleration can become yes, zero. Sir. Will you yes? write mine down? Yeah, I will write that thing down when we will talk about equilibrium. So that thing we'll also discuss in equilibrium, right? Oh, so this is that is yeah, yeah. So that is equilibrium, right? Because all the forces cancel each other out. So yeah, we'll understand it. But this this idea beautifully explains the idea of inertia, right? Yeah. And this explains the idea of force. If all the forces cancel each other out, then whatever state the object was in, it will remain in that state, right? Until and unless external forces are there, right? So that is the idea, right? Okay, so yeah, please note this thing down. And then we will talk about uh, the last. So, uh, yeah. Do you write one small point next to the F net is equal to MA part about the yeah. canceling part thing where F, F, if, F, F, if, F, if F is zero, then E will also be zero like that. Oh, I will talk about this thing in equilibrium, right? So don't. Uh, don't bother about this thing. I will talk about this. I just told you to understand the idea of this, right? So I will talk about this thing in equilibrium. Just read this. Okay. So yes. we'll talk about this thing. Okay, so yeah, please note this one. Now. Just, just.
Yeah, whenever you want me to scroll down this thing, please tell me. So it's only mm -hmm. same. Let's see. Yes, sir, Dan, can you scroll down? So done. Yeah. Okay. So now, yeah. So now let us talk about. So the next thing that we have to talk about is uh, the third law of motion. And there are uh, questions uh, that we have to do. So yeah, let us, before we do this third law of motion, let us do the other uh, questions. Right? So the bus was uh, traveling with 40 kilometer second velocity. The brake is applied on the force or, or the bus and it uh, stops after 10 seconds, right? The mass of uh, the bus, right? Find the force or retarding force Find the force experienced by the bus to stop. Right. So we have to find out uh, the force experienced by the bus. Right. Now, uh, 
answer is it thousand? Thousand. Thousand. Mm. Uh, so no. mass into time. What is mass into time? No. Remember the time. time. So hundred into ten, right? So we are talking about force, right? Force has force has dimension or unit of kg meter per second square. So this is uh, this is uh, m l t minus two dimension. Yeah. Now what is this dimension? This is m t. Yeah. Is it the dimension of force? Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, so we have to calculate. What do we know? We know that force is mass into acceleration. Yeah, and uh, mass we know, right? Acceleration we do. Force yeah. we have. To yeah. So we but know. Can you the formula where uh, acceleration is there change in rate of uh, rate of change of velocity right yeah so what is the final uh, speed oh. what is the final speed of the bus Sir, 40 km per second. So, this was the speed that the bus was traveling. So, zero now because it stopped. Yeah, so it has stopped. So, the final velocity is zero, right? Yeah. V is zero, U is how much? U is 40. 40, right? So, and T is uh, 10 seconds. So, this is 0 minus 40 divided by 10. So, this would be minus 40 by 10. So, this is 4. Minus 4 meter per second squared. And we are talking about retarding force. So, retarding acceleration would be just, let's say, retardation would be 4, right? Now we know the acceleration, we can simply calculate the force. This would be mass into acceleration, so 100 into 4. So that would be 400 Newton, right? And this would be the, so let's say the bus was uh, traveling, right? So it will experience this force in the opposite, so minus 400 Newton. This is the force the bus has experienced, right? So is it clear? Yeah. yeah. Yes, do you have any doubt? Minus 400 Newton, can you explain that part? Yeah, so this minus represents the direction of the force, right? Because it experienced the force in this direction. That is why it stopped, right? If the force would have been in this direction, then it will never stop. Right? Here. So, how so do you direction it was traveling? Yes, uh, how do I know what? Which direction was it traveling in? Okay, so the bus, let's say, I suppose, that the bus was traveling in this direction. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now I want to stop the bus. So what is the direction I apply the force? What should be the direction? Opposite direction. So that is why you have this negative sign, oh. right? It sees that you have applied minus 400 Newton the force in this direction, then it will uh, stop. It will be right. 100 into minus 4, right? Yeah, I am, I am just taking the magnitude of the force. Okay. I'm not uh, taking the direction, right? I'm calculating the retarded uh, force, right? Okay. So yeah. that is why I have just uh, omitted this negative. I'm okay. only talking about the magnitude of the force, right? Okay. 
Okay, yeah. So good that you are uh, you have some doubt and then you are clearing the doubts. So whenever you have these doubts, just uh, put it in the right? Okay, is it uh, clear? Yes, sir. Then please uh, note down this question and then we will talk about the next yeah, next uh, topic, which is third law of function. Yes,
Yeah, whenever you have noted, I'm still. Yes, sir. Okay, so now uh, the next uh, law, right? So we have talked about first law, second law, then third law. So and we, every, yes. So one second. The answer for that is minus 100 Newton, right? Yeah, so yeah. If we only talk about magnitude, then uh, it is 400. If we talk about the direction, so that would be minus 400. Okay. Yeah, so, so the third law of uh, motion. So, uh, what is uh, the third? So, everybody knows, right? Yeah. Action and uh, reaction are equal and opposite to each other. Right. So let's say that uh, if you have an object which apply the force on the second object, so this one object will feel the same amount of uh, force by the second object on one. Right. So that is the third law of motion. And using this third law of motion, right, we can define uh, the idea of, we can define the idea every, of, yes? Sure, is it that every action has an equal and opposite reaction? Yeah, so every action has equal and opposite reaction, right? which means that action and reaction are equal, right? So you have written action and reaction. Are, I mean, it's the same meaning, but like yeah. the sentences. Yeah, so both are correct. Action and reaction are equal and opposite to each other. So if you say in this way, or you say that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, both sentences are same, right? Okay but molded in a different way. So yeah, you can write, uh, yeah, but this is the actual meaning, right? So force applied by one on two, right? And this is force applied by two, on one, right? Yes, sir. So if uh, we know that force is uh, how much? Force is whatever the object and then its acceleration, right? Yes. So we are calculating force on one due to two. Oh, so this uh, force applied on one. So this is force applied, right. So this is force applied on one due to two. That is uh, the correct. And force applied by, so force applied on two due to two. 
right? So this is force on two, this is force on one, right? Is it clear? Yes. So this would be, this is force on one. So if I write the Newton's second law, so this would be how much? That would be M1 and whatever acceleration it has, right? Is it clear? So, let me understand. so this is force on one. Yeah. So force on one, which is uh, which means that the force on the mass of object which has mass m1, right? We are talking about the one object. So you have this object one, and then you have this object uh, two. So this applies some force, right? So we are counting the force on, uh, let's say this applies some force on this one. So force on uh, one due to two, right? Which yeah. means that we are counting the force on this thing, on mass m, right? Okay. So that would be mass into acceleration. Is it clear? Yeah. Similarly, what mass is, uh, yeah, so this would be m2. Because uh, because you see that uh, this has, uh, yeah, this has same, because this should have same acceleration, right? So this yeah. would be again A. But that acceleration would be in the opposite direction, right? So if we write uh, this thing, so this would be M V minus uh, U by T. And this would be V minus U by T, right? Yeah. Is it uh, clear? So this T and this T will cancel. Now this would become uh, how much? This is MV minus uh, M1 uh, U, right? And this is uh, M2V minus or plus M2U. Is it uh, clear? Yes. So if you take this thing the other side, M1 uh, V, and this thing is M2 V. You can cancel it out, right? Which one will cancel? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so this one will go the other side. So you see that what is uh, this thing? This is momentum, right? Yeah. So this is the final momentum of one. Okay. And this is the final momentum because this V is by a final velocity, right? Oh, I should write, uh, oh, I should write. So if uh, let's say that both are moving with uh, different uh, velocity, right? So this should be let's say V1 and uh, U1, and let's say this is A1 and uh, A2. So let's say both are moving with a uh, different velocity, right? Okay. So this is V1 and then this is uh, V2. Right, so V1 and uh, U1, V2 and uh, oh, oh, yeah. So this is uh, V1 and uh, this would be V2. This is U1 and then uh, U2. Right. Okay. Yeah, so this is uh, two. And then this is uh, how much? So this is uh, one and one. So this is initial momentum of one. And this is uh, initial momentum of two. So what do we see that the final momentum is equal to initial momentum? So? Yes. Could you just explain from the second last part? Yeah, is this part clear? I sh I yeah, wrote yes. that uh, acceleration. Yeah. So, but the acceleration should be different, right? Because because the product uh, should remain the same, right? Not uh, the acceleration. Because if mass is uh, greater, then acceleration would be small. If mass is smaller, then acceleration would be greater, right? So, so yeah. if you don't know, can you explain first? Okay, let's say that uh, you have this object, right? Okay. This one is M1, 
this one Sir, is I, I actually understood i just want to know like yeah so what is happening let's say that this is moving with u1 and this is moving with uh, u right okay. they collide okay. right and now uh, they are moving with let's say m1 is moving with v1 velocity and m2 is moving with uh, v2 velocity so these are uh, the final velocity right now if you see that so this became, okay so it was in the initial state then it went to the final state yeah so this is initial okay because if they contact then they will apply the force right yeah yeah, yeah. and then this is the final uh, state so now you see that if m1 is larger yeah right if m1 is larger then it will uh, it will the change in velocity will not be that much right if mass is larger then acceleration would be small that is what i am uh, saying yeah this, yeah so yeah if this is larger then this would be smaller if this is smaller then this would be larger but the product of these two will remain the same right Okay. So that uh, combines to give us the same force. Is it clear? Okay. So the final and the initial are same. Yeah. So the final, uh, final and initial momentum that would be the same. You need to understand this part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is uh, the idea of this. Uh, so from this third law of motion, what do we get? We get conservation of momentum. Right. That your initial and final momentum that will uh, always be the same. Okay. Is it clear to you? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Then uh, please note it down. And then uh, we'll uh, talk about the last topic, which is impulse, right? Mm
Yeah, whenever you want me to scroll down the screen, please do. Yes, sir. Are you uh, so? Are you submitting all those uh, assignments, sir? I didn't do any right now because I have mm -hmm. seen with some homeworks in the previous day. You didn't get uh, any homework. No, uh, I didn't see the portal. I no, I didn't please see check the portal. Yeah, please check the portal. Yes. Sir. Yeah, and uh, today I will also give you some assessment. So please also do. Yes, sir. Sir, could you please scroll down? Yes, yes. So, yeah, this is a very important law, and we'll use this uh, to solve so many of questions, right? So, yes. and this would be there in collision. Collision is there in your chapter, well, that is there in your fifth chapter, not in this one, right? So, when we talk about collision, then this law would be very useful, right? And this comes from the idea of action and duration, third law of right? Okay. Okay, so then the next uh, topic is impulse, right? Impulse. So when the force is applied for a very short, duration of time, right? Now, uh, impulse can be uh, related with pulse. So how the pulse behave? Let's see, we have this thing, right? So how the pulse behave? So uh, they behave like something, right? Okay. Right. Yes, so, for a very short duration of time, you will see some uh, force, right? Okay. So, from this pulse, we can relate this impulse, right? So, when a force is applied for a very short duration of time, then, then uh, the, the product of and uh, time is called impulse. So we, let's say that you have this uh, time and you have this uh, force. So this is uh, some force is applied, right? 
So then if you want to find out impulse, then you just multiply this F with time. This is impulse, right? Is it clear? Oh, who got disconnected? Okay, so people are uh, joining. So let's let's leave, right? And we'll talk about this thing and uh, the next. It's okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so you have this. Time is called as impulse. Force into yeah. time. Force so, into time. But, and that, so again, remember, it is related with pulse. So force is uh, applied for a very short duration of time at instant, okay. right? So okay. let's say that you are, uh, you have this uh, nail and this hammer. So for a very short duration of time, you apply this force, right? Mm -hmm. And that uh, that is uh, how you will feel this impulse. Oh, so, okay. okay. Yeah, that force is applied for a very short duration. Right? Yes. And uh, yeah, so then you can also relate this thing with different quantity. But generally, this is the idea of this impulse. Okay. You also know that what is this? Uh, what is this force? Force is m a into t, right? Yeah. What is this? Uh, what is this? Or I can uh, simply write it as. So let's say. Yeah. Let's say that uh, this time is uh, the time difference between these two is delta t. Right, so I can also write F delta T. This is delta T. And I also know the second law of motion. Right. Mm -hmm. What is the second law of motion? F is delta P by delta T. And this delta T is cancelled. So I can write that impulse is simply change of moment. So MV minus M. This is the other definition of impulse. Right. So, will we do this again in the next class? Or? Yes, yes, yeah. So, we'll talk about this thing. So, yeah, we'll stop here and we'll talk about this.